At this point, I've probably said this before, but there's so much I would change if I was to learn data analysis again, from the tools to the different tutorials, the methodologies. But what I'll primarily focus on is actually my mindset in a few different ways. And I plan to provide you with all this information, this insight in the next five minutes or so. So let's begin. Don't stop learning. When I first sat down and decided that within tech, data analysis was what I wanted to pursue, I focused on learning tools as an achievement, which once obtained, I wouldn't need to develop on. And despite that being okay to get started with the basics, if you treat learning only as a fixed destination to reach, then you limit your ability to adapt and within the face of different analysis requirements across different projects as you're content with what you've learned, essentially having a fixed mindset. Some projects will require SQL to query a database to gather data to create a couple of visualizations to showcase for a presentation. Another project may require the same amount of SQL knowledge, but the difference being the client now wants a live dashboard instead and wants you to set it up. Just that small intricacy could have you puzzled if you weren't willing to learn the additional features on a tool like Power BI, like Power BI service. Different projects will require completely different tools, styles of analysis, domain knowledge, sometimes even things you don't believe you should have to do as a data analyst, like helping scale a database. I recently used this clip from a Bruce Lee interview and honestly apply so well here. Be adaptable, be formless, be like water, keep learning. Because data analysis is not a fixed destination, but an ongoing journey at all points of your profession. Which links well into number two, only focusing on technical skills. I read a post online that said an analyst that doesn't know SQL isn't worth his salt. And although SQL is extremely important, just knowing the fundamentals of SQL and using the internet will get the job done, even though it might not be optimized code. What you actually find being a bigger problem when trying to query data is that no one actually knows where the data is to start with. So yeah, try writing a query with no database and table. And I say this to say that successful analysts know that your number one focus is on people or more specifically the stakeholders. The stakeholders are needed to gather the required data. So this is sometimes liaising with subject matter experts. The stakeholders are also the ones with the problem. So your analysis is what you're going to be using as an output to solve their problem. This is usually provided to them in the form of reports, dashboards and presentations. And most importantly, the stakeholders are who you're going to be providing insights and data level recommendations based on your reports, dashboards and presentations, which usually roots back to three things for stakeholders to make money, save money or save time, which are all forms of value. So you can have all the technical skills in the world, but what you're on the hook for is interpreting those technical skills and the understandable value for people of any background. And if you can't do that, then your value your full potential might not ever be perceived. And speaking of value, successful data analysts see the value in design. So don't neglect design. On screen, I have two pie charts, A and B. Which one do you believe is more suitable to present to a client? Unfortunately, it is a trick question. Well, kind of. If you can use another visual to show the same thing as a pie chart, it's usually best to do so, but usually it's the keyword. So your answer here would be A. With B, you simply cannot tell what's going on. The story continues with the creation of dashboards. Many a dashboard have been used for just a week or so and then abandoned, left to free fall into what I like to call dashboard hell because they're just not useful to anyone. They usually follow the themes of not being appealing, the wrong visuals are used, it's overly complex, or it's just way too slow to use. So let's avoid that. Earlier this week, I was part of a workshop where one of my clients had a web page that had a high click through rate, but also a high bounce rate. So less than ideal. One of the contractors mentioned a book called Don't Make Me Think and mentioned how implementing some of the content within this book would help increase the usability of the website. So should inversely decrease the user bounce rate, which made me think when creating dashboards, people should be at the heart or the focus of the decisions made. Creating good dashboards that actually provide value takes a lot of design work to ensure both the functional and non-functional requirements of your stakeholder are actually met. Starting with the initial design wireframe, considering optimization of your query, and then the schema style for the underlying data that you'll use feeding into the dashboard, then creating multiple iterations based on feedback, and then finally having a production ready dashboard ready for deployment. 
Rome wasn't built in a day and your dashboard shouldn't be either. So don't neglect design, embrace it. Don't do this. <gasps> what kind of place is this? I'm gonna read the detail of it and that's all, folks. Actually, a word before you leave. This part wasn't planned, so excuse the lack of conciseness or editing here. But data analysts, successful ones, avoid analysis paralysis, which is where you go overboard with your analysis, which leads you to not being able to make viable decisions. So this is going too much into your technical work. So let's say an over optimization of queries, or maybe even just looking for additional data sets to solidify your analysis which in actuality is not actually going to change the recommendations and insights provided to your client or stakeholder. And this is not great because you avoid getting to the end output to what you're on the hook for to the actual scope of the project. And you don't want to lose your job over that, which actually links directly to the final point. A great data analyst has already analyzed and assessed the risk of losing their job to AI. And despite all the headlines, at least for now, knows that this is just gonna make them more efficient because AI can never be as creative as you, lacks the ability to apply logical reasoning and intuition, which is very great for being able to apply domain knowledge and actually make those data-led recommendations and decisions. And then finally, AI will never and can't be you. Now, those are my thoughts. So, if you like the video, then therefore leave a like. If you dislike the video, then press the dislike button. Press it twice, please. And if you want to follow up part to this video, then in the comments, write so unorthodox. In the meantime, have a look at these two videos here. I'm sure they'll provide you some value. And until next time, stay blessed, take care, and peace.